Well, sweet. Good morning. Welcome. My name is Austin Heislip. I'm one of the organizers here at One Million Cups. If you're an organizer, raise your hand. Find one of these people if you're new here and tell them that you would love to speak here at One Million Cups. Or if you know somebody that would love to speak here at One Million Cups, we're always looking for uh, speakers. Um, new faces. I'm seeing a couple of new faces this morning. So before I give Lowell the microphone, you see, you know, he's an organizer, so he kind of just took over the presentation this morning. Uh, so One Million Cups was founded by the Coffin Foundation in Kansas City, Missouri. Hey. St. Louis. Hey. We're learning. We're learning. Yeah, for about a month and a half, I kept saying St. Louis, and then would have to be corrected while standing here. Anyway, so the the idea behind One Million Cups is it's an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial ecosystem. Say that five times fast. Um, where we all sit down and talk about struggles and how we can help one another um, and grow a, a stronger small business community here in Joplin. And there's about 160 something chapters uh, across the area all meeting right now, hence one million cups of coffee being had. And that's all I've got. Lol, get up here. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Sound a little froggy, but allergies. <laughs> Anyway, um, so today's going to be a little different in that we're going to do more of like an educational thing. And so we're going to talk about the vision for your business. But um, if you don't know who I am, I'm Lowell Lane. I'm with Lowell Lane Business Services. That's me. I'm part of the Higher Vision team. But my, well, let me back up. Let me tell you why I do what I do. Why I do what I do is two things is to do business consulting and also do financial coaching for personal business or people. So that stems back to back in um, a long time ago, I went through Financial Peace University and you know, we were in a bad situation and uh, we got out of it, we got debt free. And I said when you know, I graduated and all that and then I did some classes where I taught them and all that and I'm like, you know what, someday I wanna do this to help other people out of these situations and help them get financially free. So I did that, so I'm doing that now. But um, on the business side, the reason why I do what I do is because I've been the business owner, trying to do everything by myself. I've been the accountant, the plumber, the you know, maintenance person, the dishwasher, whatever it took to get things done. And you know, when you do that, uh, it's not always uh, fun, but also, you know, it's just, I didn't know who to talk to or where to go to. So. You know, that's what I do is I help people with whatever their challenges are and we go from there. So that's why I do it. But anyway, so I do business consulting. I do a lot of QuickBooks uh, consulting, uh, help people with just various things and have business startups. And then I'm a Dave Ramsey coach. And then, can you even see that? It's kind of hard to see, isn't it? Anyway, the point is, is I have a program that's called the Business Startup Formula and that's where this message came from. It's kind of my introduction to uh, the program, but it's a step-by-step -step program to help people take their business idea and turn it into an actual functioning, profitable business. Okay, so we're going to dive in. Um, so, I don't know if this will play or not. Okay. We'll just do this for a minute. So this is my my dream vacation. too long but here's the point why does this what does this have to do with anything with business well here's the point when you have a you know dream of going someplace like Italy that's a big trip and there's a lot involved in planning a trip like that and so what I want to do is talk about that for a minute so um, I did some research and they said that on average to plan a trip like that um, it takes anywhere from six to 18 months of planning and scheduling and figuring out all these things. And so we're going to talk about that for a minute um, and go through that. But let's just talk about that for a minute. So here are just some of the steps. 
but you got to think about what your budget's going to be. You know, how much can you afford to do and how much is it going to cost for everything? You know, where exactly do you want to go? What do you want to do while you're there? What's your itinerary? I mean, what are the top things you want to do? Then you've got to research all the flights and the dates and what might be good or look for deals, that kind of thing. And most importantly, you got to start saving for it because we don't want any credit cards debt, right? Because that's not a fun trip when you have to pay for it afterwards. But uh, anyway, and then once you start saving while you're doing it, then you can plan all the fun stuff and the creative, your itinerary and all that, and then you enjoy it. Okay, so now you can say, it takes six to 18 months to, to do all that. Um, you might be uh, good at doing more, but the point is, it is a lot of work. And so starting a business is also a lot of work. There's a lot involved in planning it and getting ready to do it and going through that. So here's my question is, what is your visit vision for your business? So I meet a lot of people and they have a business idea. They want to do this, they want to do that or whatever. I say, okay, well tell me what's that look like? They're like, what? I'm like, what's it look like? Okay, just like planning this vacation. Okay, where do you want to go with it? What do you want to do? Is it going to be a brick and mortar? Is it going to be a pop-up thing? Is it going to be a mobile business? You know, what's it look like? You know, have you got a logo? Have you got an idea? You know, a concept? Is it going to be a cool hit place? Or is it going to be, you know, what is it going to be? The point is you got to get all these ideas and thoughts out of your head and put them on paper in some form or fashion uh, so you can start really developing that. Because Doug and I were talking this morning, you know, people will start a business and they just go get a checkbook and they get a thing and they just jump in and go on it without any research or ideas or anything. And, you know, sometimes it works, but, you know, the failure rate's pretty high. So, um, anyway, we'll go to the next one. So, again, what does it look like? And these are some of the things that I walk people through is going through all this stuff. And you'll have a brainstorming session where no, there's no bars, you know, just start writing ideas. So, you know, are you going to have a building? Is it going to be mobile, pop-up? Are you going to have an e-commerce site? You know, are you going to sell clothes online or have a store or both? You know, what does it look like? Is it going to have a vibe? Is it going to have look, you know, modern? Is it going to be country or whatever? You know, what's it feel like, smell like, vibe, or whatever? I'll give you an example. We have a, 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 a chiropractor that we work with. And when he got his new office, I'm like, well, okay, let's talk about what this office is gonna look like. You know, what do you envision it to look like? And he said, well, I want it to be comfortable and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, what's it smell like? And he said, what? I said, what's it smell like? Do you walk in and it's clean? Or do you want a fruity smell? Or do you want candles going? Or do you want you something? The point is you gotta appeal to all these senses. You know, you gotta look at what's it look like? What's it smell like? What's the, you know, is it cold, is it what? I mean, you gotta be very specific. The point was, is he did all that, and now when you walk in his office, it's nice and clean. He's got a little candle thing in there that you know, makes it smell good. He's got music playing in the background real softly, kind of set a mood. You know, it's just nice, and you come in, you feel welcome. Okay, so here's another big piece, and again, this is an actual, program I go through, so there's a lot of information here, but I'm going through it pretty quick just to kind of touch some bases here, get you thinking. Here's another thing is, are you really ready to start a business? So there's a lot of people that have ideas, but they're not necessarily actually ready to really jump in and do it, because not everyone who has a business idea has the characteristics needed to succeed. Now, that doesn't mean they can't get there, but you know, what education are you gonna need? Um, you know, maybe the, what you're wanting to do, you don't really have any work experience in that field. So maybe you can get a part-time job working in there, or mentoring or shadowing somebody. You know, are you very self-motivated? Uh, are you effective at time management and keeping yourself on track? Uh, you know, are you decisive? Because you gotta make decisions, quick. <laughs> uh, you know, are you in good health? Uh, do you have the physical capability to do it? Uh, and here's the most important part, and that is, is your family supportive and behind you doing this? Don't ask me how, I know, but I do. 
Uh, if your family is not behind you and you do something, it is not a good situation. And I can tell you that story later. Okay, so what is the idea and the concept here of when you start a business? Like I said, before you actually launch your business, these are part of the pieces to that roadmap of planning your, your uh, journey. And that is you gotta put together a business plan. You know, you gotta describe your business. So you're gonna have products and services. What's the legal business structure gonna be? What's the organizational structure? Who's gonna do what? Uh, you know, and then the marketing plan, you got to do your market uh, assessment, you know, what's your competition doing, who's your customer going to be, you know, what the budget you're going to have to spend to get those customers. There's lots and lots of pieces, um, you know, and then finances. Some people think, oh, I'll just get a loan. Okay, well, you really need some savings first. Uh, but, um, you know, people need to think about their personal financial needs for the next six to 18 months if they're going to dive in. You know, how are you going to pay your bills? You know, what are your expenses? How are you going to do that? You know, and then what are the actual startup costs going to be? So, you know, like if I was going to set up a, this kitchen in here, you know, what's all the equipment going to cost that I need to do what I'm going to do? You know, you got to figure those actual costs. You have to shop for them. Find that out. I mean, there's a lot of pieces to it. And by the way, I've got, um, if you're interested in having any of this, I've got lots of documentation and different pieces of stuff that I can send you. And if you sign up on the email list on there, I can um, actually send those to you so you can have them if you want. Just tell me you want them and I'll send them to you. Okay. And then here are the things uh, that are, um, one of the things that I really encourage people to do in, um, in uh, setting up a business. And that is, Really where it starts is, is, what are your goals for the next 10 years, five years, this year, next year, whatever. Because if this business doesn't really fit into your goals, then why are you doing it? But if it makes your goals get quicker and all that, that's a very important piece. Because what I tell people like with my time management class is that, you know, if what you're doing today doesn't get you where you want to be in 10 years, then why are you doing it? So it's the same thing. If you have a goal for the next 10 years and starting a business is not going to help you get there, I think you need to reevaluate. <clears throat> So I want to challenge you with that sheet is to sit down, get you a cup of coffee or whatever it takes you for you to relax, relax and think and really think about where do you want to be in the next 10 years? You know, maybe you're getting close to retirement. I don't think anybody here is old enough to do that, but okay. So, you know, what's it look like in 10 years? You want to be sitting on a beach, sipping, sipping a drink and getting sun or, you know, are you going to be writing 15 more books <laughs> or whatever. But what's that picture look like, okay? So then once you figure out where your ultimate goal is, let's go down, okay, so if I'm gonna get here in 10 years, then in the next five years, I need to accomplish this. <coughs> Excuse me. But then in order to get there in five years, what do I have to do this next year? And break it down. So what, my sales manager used to tell me to break it down to the ridiculous. You know, break it down to what do I need to do every day in order to get me to my goal. Okay, but that's a big, big part of this. So take that, um, that sheet, figure that out first. Then the next thing I would do is do the brainstorming session and get everything out of your head about what this business looks like and where you're going to do with it, you know. Like I said, who, I heard someone talking the other day, and I was watching a video about it, but they're saying, you know, if you have a business idea, first of all, write it down, you know, and write out kind of a description. It could just be a couple paragraphs about what is it, what's it look like, you know, what's it going to be. Then take that, print it out or whatever, and go and talk to your friends and say, hey, I have this business idea. Here's what I'm thinking about doing. What do you think? Oh, that's a great idea. 
No, that's a horrible idea. But the point is, if you get that consensus and kind of find out what people's opinions are, if it's something they would use, you know, I mean, you get lots of ideas, well then start jotting down their responses and their ideas and see what they say about it because that can help guide you towards getting there. And, you know, you may find out that what you thought is not what really needs to happen. They really need this or they really need that. So it might change your whole direction in the picture. So. You may think that you're gonna make widgets, but what people don't really want that widget, they want this, which is something associated to it. And so it could change your whole thing. But wouldn't you rather find that out first than going ahead and setting up a business and get a location, or we're talking about this, someone just opened up a location and boom, they open the doors and now what? But, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of things you can do that take a lot of planning and ideas and stuff ahead of time to get you where you're going. So, um, I wanted to share this with you. I've got, like I said, several different really good tools. This one is a startup expenses sheet. Okay. This is a great tool if you're thinking about starting up a business. I've uh, got it from my Dave Ramsey stuff. But this goes through all kinds of stuff from your building expenses and advertising and signage and you know, payroll and all the different pieces, but it's a great tool and it really kind of helps open your thing because a lot of people don't think about some of these things. And so again, I can send that to you. Um, I've got all this in electronic format um, to get you there. I'm trying to make this short. So. And also, another one I have is if you're going to plan a vacation, this is an awesome sheet about helping you plan that vacation. And again, it's a Dave Ramsey tool, but it is an awesome thing about planning a vacation. And so again, I can send that to you also. But like I said, I got a whole pack of stuff here. But um, sorry. Okay. Um, so here's where I want to go with this is. Whether you're, uh, you know, you have a job and you're working a nine to five or whatever, but you still have a little business idea out there in your head, what I want to do, I want to challenge you to that, that sheet of get some of those ideas down on paper and go through that goal sheet. And then here's the other thing. If you do that, I would be glad to sit down and have a cup of coffee with you or a phone call or whatever and help you go through that and just see what, uh, you know, what your options might be. Another thing to remember, you know, Doug is the director of entrepreneurship. He's got great resources. You know, Ken uh, Sherbert is not here today from the Small Business Development Center. They have tons of resources. And if you haven't connected with Miss Lori at the Neosho Chamber, these girls are awesome at helping people. Because when it comes to getting ideas, <laughs> these girls have lots of ideas and lots of things to help, especially when it comes to online. So. There are so many resources available. If you don't take advantage of them, then you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot. But I guess we can open up for questions. Like I said, I took a two hour thing and put it into 10 minutes for whatever it is. But the point is, let's, uh, anybody got questions? Let's start there. Don't be bashful. I do. Okay, I used go to for it. Jump in front of you guys. Um, your input about getting information or feedback from your family members and friends, mm -hmm. would that be like the executive summary? And, and in that process, when you talk about the details of visualization, to make sure that people know that you're serious about it, is that it's not, hey, let's sit down and, or go have a beer and here's an idea on a cocktail napkin. It's like, Maybe write out your executive summary, type it up nicely, put it in a binder book, and ask for them to maybe even put in a questionnaire so that they know it's a little bit more serious. What does that look like? Well, the way I was always taught about the executive summary is that's the very last thing you make in a business plan after you've done everything. So what I was talking about is, is you know, brainstorm, get all your thoughts down, get your feedback, and then just write up a little paragraph of some kind, you can call it exactly the same way you want. But the point is, something that's gonna get your uh, idea across to other people, 
and then just, you know, you can either memorize it or you can print it out, whatever. And then stick and say, hey, I'm starting to think about starting a business. Here's what my thoughts are. Give me your thoughts, ideas, and opinions. And then, like I said, take a notebook with you and jot down what they tell you. Because again, you're gonna find lots of things out maybe you didn't think of. So like I said, you may be selling widgets, but what about this add-on? Or, you know, can it do this or can it do that? Well, I didn't think about that. Or, you know, if you guys have been around here long enough to see, we've had multiple people come in and present their idea, and then they walk around with five or 10 new ideas that they never thought of because somebody thought, so what about this? So what about that? You know, that's the beauty of One Million Cups is getting that feedback and ideas. So that is a free tool that you have at your exposure before you go out and spend any money. It's get your idea, get people's ideas, and have them, in a way, if you think about it, let other people help you build your business. Because remember, if you, especially like if you're doing a service business of some kind, okay, the reason you do a service business is because somebody has a pain or a, a challenge or something that they're dealing with, okay? Well, if they have the pain, what is it that they're, have enough of a pain about that they're willing to pay to get help, okay? Well, again, uh, it could look like one thing, but again, if you get feedback from other people, it may look like a whole different thing when you end up, because then you find out what, you know, you dig deeper and find out more just by asking questions. So, again, that's all free, so. I just have a comment about um, one thing you cups and the resources that you have to attend as whether you're starting a business, have a business, um, you know, some might think, well, the chamber comes because they're wanting to recruit as these people as a member, but I have, I come because I gain so much um, really good information and knowledge from learning what businesses um, are, have their challenges, what the answers from the community that is listening, what resources they're giving. Um, so by far, I've learned more um, attending this than um, really a lot of other things that you go to. Um, they're not as real as really talking about what the challenges are as a business, um, as a business owner as well, and in just dealing with bus businesses every day. You're always looking for the best resources to not only solve whatever issues you're dealing with, but whatever these businesses are. And so this is a great um, resource, so I encourage you to come whenever you can. Um, and, and not just when you're presenting or, or that kind of thing, because you can learn so much. Um, there's so much knowledge in this room always of people that, that you may think, oh, they're just a banker, they do with banking, but you don't, you realize in, when they're giving answers that, that maybe they own three businesses, they failed at some, they have a lot of resources that are, that are there to give. So I encourage you to, to attend. Um, I, that is why I'm here, is always to learn. And I appreciate Lowell, he's, he's a great mentor of mine and, and Doug as well. So. That's just kind of, I mean, that ability is, is to, when you're in business, to be willing to step outside and, and listen for the challenges of other people and learn from them. So, I'll say, just say one comment. So, um, what I was talking about earlier, that one of the reasons why I do what I do is because when I started my first full-time business, I didn't have anybody to, to ask questions, bounce things off. I mean, I just kind of had to, you know, I tell people I have a PhD from the School of Hard Knocks <laughs> because I just had to try to figure it out. So if I would have had this resources and all the resources around the Joplin area now, you know, 15 years ago, things would be a lot different. Because, I mean, there's a lot of things that I have made stupid mistakes, but I didn't know any better. So that's why like I said I've had four or five different businesses of different kinds of different things. So I've learned lots of stuff along the way. But you know, we've also built a great resource network. So if I don't know the answer, I can probably find it and get it. So that you guys need to take advantage of those things. Um, so who has the next question? Amy. Yeah, I was gonna ask. I could probably answer this when it's the longer presentation, but for those that you work with that have already gotten started, because um, I kind of see some of this as a precursor, what's maybe one or two of the big takeaways that they probably wish they knew before they got started, or, or a big aha, where they're like, oh crap, if I'd have known that, one or two things, well, that would have like, <laughs> I'm gonna answer that kind of two phase. Okay. Quite frankly, one of the number one things that I um, hear or see from people is, they are not prepared financially 
to start a business. I mean, I, I was just telling him this morning, you know, I sat down with a couple just two weeks ago. The, uh, one of the clients I have referred them because they want to start a new business. Blah, 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 great. I said, okay, so when we had a call, I talked to them and then we sat down to visit. So I sat down to visit and like, okay, well, I've been working this job for 25 years. I'm tired of it, don't like it, blah, blah, blah. And so I want to quit and I want to start this new business. And, you know, I think that we can get a loan for $50,000 and we'll be good. I'm like, hmm, okay. So number one, I started going through the list with them. So, you know, you're going to sell this product. So how much you know, inventory you're gonna to have to have to be able to have enough, you know, to make all this stuff you wanna make. Well, I think that, you know, we can get the hoses, and what are the, sorry, the stuff for $25,000. Okay, so that's enough. But what about all the equipment? Well, we got that, so we started adding. Okay, well then, you know, they didn't thought about a building. Well, you have to have a building to house all this, and it's gonna to have to be a retail location to do it. When we got done, and we hadn't even talked about payroll, their expenses or anything else, we were already at around 100 to 125,000, which they were kind of shocked. And then I said, okay, and then what are your monthly expenses at home? Because you're making four grand a month running your job right now, and you're just gonna walk away, so how are you gonna pay that? I said, how much money do you have in savings? Oh, we don't have any money in savings. You're gonna quit your job and go get a loan and may or may not work. He said, oh, well, but, you know, I just was offered another job. So we talked about that, and I'm like, um, you know what? I think it would be a really good choice for you to take that job, work it. You won't have to work nights or weekends anymore, and you're getting a pay raise, and start saving your money. And, you know, five years down the road or ten years down the road, when you've got 50 grand in the bank or something, and you can start looking at this, you know, I'm sure it'll, it'll be good, but work that job for now. You know, so sometimes reality hits, and you have to uh, figure that out. Um, but again, I think that a lot of people, they have an idea, and they've got, they're like a horse with blinders on, and they're, all they're seeing is this one thing, and they're not seeing everything else that really goes into the big picture of putting this all together. That's why I say, if you get all this brainstorming stuff out of your mind, and then we walk because that's what this program I have does, is walks them through every single step of putting together a business. So this vision thing is just the first part. Okay, but once we get that down, you know, then we talk about all the legal stuff. You know, you've got to set up your business uh, with the state and the federal and get all your things. you got to get a, a, all the LLCs and DBAs and all these other pieces. And how is it going to work? You have to have your uh, agreements for how the business is going to run, who's going to do what, all this and you go through all that, well then there's finances, then there's marketing, then there's your sales and your products and your sales process, and then there's HR and time management, all these things. But that's what I do with it, is I walk them through every step. So you think about it, I kind of hold their hand, say, okay, here's what you do next, here's what you do next, here's what you do next. Now, when we get this all done, you basically have a complete business manual, you've got your marketing plan done, you've got everything ready to go, you've got your financials ready, so whether you're going to the SBA, you're going to the bank, or you're just gonna jump in, the point is, you've got everything done, and you're ready to start and launch your business. So that's the whole idea. So I think that answers your question. Yeah. <laughs> Before you're 120K in the hole. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Somebody else had one? I have a yeah. comment. So okay. um, you mentioned uh, the you know Small Business Development Center. Also, SCORE is another resource yeah. that we have in our community. Yeah. If you haven't heard of SCORE or talked to Bob Headley or Russ Alcorn, they're great resources as well. The, one of the most powerful things that I ever heard um, Bob say when he was at a meeting here was that he was talking to some entrepreneurs who had who had businesses going, um, but he, he asked them, he challenged them to write out job descriptions for everything that they um, do because they were doing, the one person he was talking to was doing like six jobs. Yeah. Um, and they were trying to get some help, but they didn't know exactly how to do that. So that was really, like I work in the nonprofit world. Um, we have job descriptions already. We have people doing the things, but, yeah. but that, was, that was a powerful thing for me to hear for an entrepreneur yeah. to do for their business. So that's just a comment that I had. Well, I've done this program that I have with people that are already in business because again they just jumped into something yeah. 
you know, they just, okay, I'm gonna rent a building and I'm gonna get the checkbook and I'm gonna get the stuff and we're gonna open the doors. Okay, I had, believe it or not, I had one lady who was in the retail business, she'd been in business two years, and guess what she did? She never registered with the state. So in two years of business, she never paid a dime of sales tax. She didn't have a sales tax license. She didn't have a city permit, but she was operating for two years that way. And I'm like, uh, kind of like that. And she said, but here's the point. She said, I didn't know. I didn't know that I had to do all that. And I think some people just don't know what they don't know. That's why, this is a wonderful thing that either one man gets. <laughs> so Amen. can I jump in on something yeah. on that? Um, all of that is just so spot on true. And we know the stats are, what, 80, 85% of new startups fail in the first three years. I think at some point in time, I, it would be nice to have a database of our Southwest Missouri region. And look at that and track that over the next few years because I really feel like our small businesses have a higher rate of success because of things exactly what Lowell is doing. And even in my role at the chamber, there have been about four individuals in the three years I've been here where I've had to have a tough conversation with them to let, to let them discover in our conversation that now is not a good time for them to start a business. And so, that, but that's important. And one of them actually waited a year and did a lot of this type of stuff and then come up with a plan to start in another six or eight months in the future. So that is increasing their chances of being successful. So imagine if we looked at a baseline of startup failures, three years old that are newer in Southwest Missouri and we pick out our counties in 2020, 2023, what does that look like in 2033? If we can bring that number down, that's that's huge. And as a follow-up to that, um, there are great resources, just like you mentioned SCORE, Missouri Source Link, resources through Missouri Technology Corporation. So one of the things that's, that is a goal of mine, and I'm pretty confident I can convince our chamber president of this, in first quarter of 24, I want to put together a Southwest Missouri Entrepreneurial Ecosystem Roundtable, where all of the chambers come to the table, the SBDC comes to the table, everybody that provides this type of resource, and we look at not necessarily what we can structure, but at a bare minimum create a system and process so that we're all on the same page because if somebody pops in i'm sure they have popped in at your office down at the osho and said hey i'm thinking about starting a business and being a former business owner like i am you sit down and you're in that moment and you're trying to hear a drink from this fire hose but if we had if we had something a little bit more structured for a southwest missouri entrepreneurial ecosystem or even go as far as dare i say create something like Startup Junkie in Northwest Arkansas, that would be huge. Now we're doing things where we're not duplicating, but SBDC is complimenting Bob at SCORE, is complimenting the Chamber with the Incubator, is complimenting Southwest uh, Neosho and their businesses that maybe their, their target market is just going to be Neosho and South, but every everything is helping to be part of that. So put that on your radar sometime in first quarter of 24. I think we've already got a good start with that just because all of the chambers work together in this area, so. We do, we're blessed in that. Yeah. You know, that doesn't happen everywhere. Yeah. And, and not to speak for them, but I don't know in Northwest Arkansas if there is the kind of camaraderie among all of their chambers that we do especially with between the Osho Joplin and Carl Junction and Carthage to some, yeah, Carthage is getting more active too. So yeah, good point. Okay, so I have a question. I know some of you are have jobs and some of you are remember. How many of you have a business idea that you're setting on? 
Can you have both? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Why not? Tons of ideas. Yeah, maybe you have a business now, but you have another idea for another business. <laughs> so we'll have one person with a business idea. Oh, you have one. Okay. Then we have two. Okay. What was your comment, Lori? I don't want another one right now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I think you have a couple. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, think uh, about what your next steps are in that. Okay. And again, use that sheet and really spend some time to sit down and really think about where you're going and where that goes. But, and I want to encourage you on the flip side. Okay, the rest of you don't have a business idea, but go ahead and do this 10-year, uh, 5-year thing because who knows what that may develop into. There may be a business in your future you didn't think about it yet. But anyway, that's just a good thing for anybody. So. Or also, if you know someone has a business idea, you've got a contact to help them maybe yeah. see forward a little bit, yeah. right? Like, if you drive to California, Will can give them the first 200 feet. <laughs> well, you know, there's so many things, like I said, that we're talking about this to death, but you know, there's so many resources out there that if you're even thinking about a business, um, you really need to take advantage of all those things. And like I so said, you could ask anyone in this room to help you get there. Actually, you know, it's really interesting. I kind of think of it in these terms, even though I, I'm not... Uh, uh, starting a business on my own, I'm working for a company. But the gr the great thing about an entrepreneurial uh, entrepreneurial spirit is that uh, for growth. And uh, when you break something down from ten years, you know where do I want to see my company going mm -hmm. in ten years? What do I want to see in five years? And breaking it down, okay, well, in order to make that happen, then I'm going to have to. I'm gonna to have to step up to the plate and I'm gonna to have to break it down to where I meet five clients a day or I meet five uh, build re relationships with uh, social workers or, or uh, you know other agencies within the area. I'm gonna to have to break it down into this in order to make this happen. So, you know, it really applies to just really growth for any industry or any job that you're doing. So how I learned that technique was I had an old sales manager boss in the company, but anyway, you know, he was very, very goal oriented and wanted to make sure all his salespeople were very goal oriented. But he would, at the beginning of the year, we would have a kickoff meeting or for a thing, but he would set a goal for each person, a number. Okay, well you better figure out how you're gonna get there. But he taught this process. So I'm just gonna throw a number up. Let's say you need to sell a million dollars this year. Okay, great. Well, that's so much per month. That's so much per week. That means I gotta sell so much per day. Well, I knew what my closing ratio was. I have to make you know 15 calls and then I get three sales out of it or whatever. Okay, well, based on that number, that means I've got to make 27 contacts each day in order to hit my number. Okay, so I mean there's a science to it. But the point is, guess what? We would do that every year, and not only did we hit our number, we exceeded our number every year. Wow. But it was because we followed up and we had we actually had to turn those numbers in, and he would check them. Mm -hmm. And if you were falling behind or whatever, it'd be, hey, come talk to me. What's going on? We need to figure out your plan you know, going. So, but I love to tell this story. He was the same guy that I uh, said he's very goal oriented, but he wanted a plane. He wanted to buy a plane because he was getting his pilot's license and his goal was to have his own plane. So he, uh, I said, well, what kind of plane do you want? And he said, I want a Cessna blah, 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 whatever it was. And I'm like, okay, so you already get picked out. He said, oh yeah, I already went to the, the Cessna store and picked out the one I wanted. I know what color it is. It's got leather interior that's beige and blah, blah, blah. He said, I'm gonna have a red stripe down the side of it. And he said, it's a Cessna whatever, whatever. And he said, and they're cost X number of dollars. I can't remember what the number was. It was a big number. And I said, great. I said, when are you going to buy it? He says, I'm going to buy it within five years and I'm going to write a check for it. Oh, it was six figures. So guess how he did that? He had a sheet in his closet where he got dressed every morning. And, and he had a sheet on there that had the picture of the plane. He already picked it out. And it had his gold things on there, what he had to do every week to get there. 
And it, as he would meet them, he would check it off. Anyway, he paid cash for that plane in two and a half years. So, goals work. But they Good gotta job, be, coach. Yeah, they got to be written. They've got to be uh, attainable. And they've got to have a plan. And you've also got to set a date to get there. That's why I say, what are you going to do in 10 years? So I'll just tell you mine real quick and then we'll wrap this up. My goal in the next two years, by the end of 24 actually, I want it to be to where I can work totally remotely if I have to, because my wife and I spent 30 years raising kids, we want to travel. So I want to be able to get in the car and go wherever I want to go or do whatever I want to do and work from wherever I'm at, if I'm on a beach or a mountain or whatever, it doesn't matter. But that's my goal. So what am I doing for that? Well, I went through this and I wrote it all down. So I'm developing an online product, I'm doing different things, but I'm getting there, slow and surely, but I'll get there. But that's my goal, so. But again, without a plan, it's just like that trip. You're not gonna get there unless you make a plan. And you gotta have a roadmap. So, anyway, any other questions? Okay, what you got going on with the team? Uh Joplin Chamber, big not a big announcement, but e-commerce meetup is not happening for August. There's so many people out on vacation and it's right before school. Even if we had a host business, I, it wouldn't be fair to them because we wouldn't have a lot of people show up. So be looking for us again in September. Uh, and then today at the Chamber, for Chamber members, we've got a Higher Vision that's going to be doing a program on sales and networking. That starts at 11. 11 to 1. 11 to 1, so that'll be that'll be very important and powerful, so please attend that. And then we've got uh, Morning Brew this Friday at Missouri American Water at the water treatment plant. And that's always a great time. They always have a great spread of breakfast food and it's networking and then it's your opportunity to tour the water plant, which was always pretty fascinating. And the history behind that plant is unbelievable. Uh, so. That's good too, so come to that Friday morning. Well, it is a like, competing event, but we have an event Friday morning as well. But um, <laughs> it is to be our, our coffee. Normally we try to stagger those because we have a lot of members that go to both, and so, but every so often it falls falls on the same time. Um, ours is in Granby this, um, this week at um, GTC Broadband. They are the fiber um, provider in Granby. They're hosting it, and immediately after that we have a ribbon cutting at Quilter's Heaven, which is uh, the quilt shop in Granby. So, you know, um, that's hard to be. I like. I kind of want to go to the water plant too. <laughs> but um, well, I want to go to that. Yeah, there's. <laughs> see, we just squash. Um, there's always lots of opportunities. I encourage you to to be out and about doing as many of those things as you can. Ribbon cuttings are just ramping up. Um, I think we have one today, one Thursday, um, one Friday. I think there's something every day this week, but. Um, you can always look on the chamber calendar on our website um, if you want to get kind of um, in touch with things. I encourage you, one of the things I, I always like, sometimes people don't think about ribbon cuttings. I mean, and I didn't think that about them the way that I do now. It's, it's a great opportunity, especially if you're doing business with other businesses um, or just want to um, get some cheerleaders on your, you know, for your business. When you show up at a ribbon cutting, those, you just think of it as they're throwing a party. And um, you know when you have a party, you're like, is anybody coming to my party? You're, you're anxious, you're nervous. And then when those people come, you have this like, genuine like, I really like them. They came to my party and they're like, what do they sell? Because I wanna, I wanna support them. So it's a really great way to build really strong relationships. And so if you have, um, it's a great opportunity to send people that are maybe new to the community. Maybe they're new to your business. If you're a bank and you have new associates that working for the bank, it's a great way for them to get involved in the community and make some connections to kind of keep them um, intertwined. So um, there's lots of opportunities to um, support other businesses and organizations with those ribbon cuttings, groundbreakings, all those kind of things. So sometimes um, that didn't really click until I really saw people that were, how that was affecting those people that are holding those, how much it means to us at the chamber when people attend those events. So um, I encourage you, if you have time in your schedule, to attend any of those kind of events that are coming up. And we have a golf tournament.